Yeah, so colligation is basically the grammatical patterns that attach themselves to words. It's like the micrograma of individual words. And I think it's important for several reasons. One is just because we don't discuss it enough in English language teaching. I don't think many teachers are conscious of it. I don't think we are trained enough to think about how we deal with it in our teacher talk and in our board work. And it's important because words colligate differently in different languages, okay? So as I was saying earlier, you know, what might be an active verb in one language will be a passive verb in another language. Students often get frustrated because they study lots of big grammar, by which I mean things like the present simple, the present continuous, the first conditional, the passive, going to and will. And they do all of that kind of Raymond Murphy's English grammar in use grammar. But when they try to speak, they have problems because words don't collocate in the way that they do in their first language. You know, this morning, one of my Russian students said, I have a strong headache. It's like, you mean bad headache? She says, yeah, can I say strong? No. Why? Well, because in English, you, you don't talk about strong headaches. It's not a collocation. Um, you know, you can have strong alcohol. <laughs> Maybe the next day you have a bad headache. It doesn't give you a strong headache. Um, so often words don't work in the way that you want them to, because in one language they collocate one way, in another language they collocate another way. And it's the same for the grammatical patterns. So, you know, my Japanese students might say something like, this weekend I was stolen my mobile phone, okay? Um, what they mean is someone stole my mobile or I had my mobile phone stolen. And what they're doing is they're bringing over the exact pattern from L1 to L2. And that's not a problem that studying something like Raymond Murphy's English grammar in use or doing more work on the present perfect or anything like that is going to solve. Uh, in the same way, uh, the students who say things like, I don't know, you know, something bad has been happened on Oxford Street. That's not a problem of not knowing how to use the present perfect properly. That's a problem of thinking that happen colligates passively in English because that's probably how it colligates in the first language and it doesn't work like that in English. And I see this all the time with students. One of my students this morning, again, proficiency level student said, I was recommended to me, okay, because in Russian you make that passive, like, you know, uh, a place was offered to us by. Uh, in English, you'd usually just do it with a kind of dummy subject, like someone recommended him to me, okay? Or, you know, he was recommended to me, but not I was recommended him by somebody. The meaning's basically the same. The colligation is different, yeah? In lots of languages, you say things like, um, I feel myself relaxed in the countryside. Okay, because in some languages it's a reflexive verb, in English it isn't. All of those kinds of areas are colligation. On top of all of that, I think, there's also the fact that different meanings of the same word colligate differently. So if you take a word like cause, okay, as a noun, the most common meaning of cause is something that makes another thing happen. And this meaning of cause has very particular grammatical features. It's usually used with the, and it's usually followed by of, and then another noun. So you talk about, you know, the causes of the First World War. I've got to write an essay on the causes of the First World War. The main cause of these accidents is drivers driving too fast. Well, once you change the meaning of cause, say you take the third most common meaning of cause, which is like um, an aim or an organization that's trying to do something in society that you think is probably a good thing um, or a bad thing. Um, that has very different colligation. So that's usually used with zero article or indefinite articles. It more often comes at the end of a sentence and it's used with a wider range of prepositions. So you might say something like, 
please give as much as you can. It's for a worthy cause. I'm not very sympathetic to their cause. Okay. And I think what it means is just being conscious of all of these issues and using that consciousness to help you think more about what kind of examples you give students and what you point out to students, what you encourage students to notice as you meet these examples, whether that's in a course book, in a listening or through your board work or teacher talking time. So that's why I think colligation is important. Well, I guess it depends what your expectations are. I don't expect that students are all going to learn, remember, reproduce and start accurately using language as soon as I've taught it. Um, I think this is based on the false idea that we present language, we get students to practice it and then they start producing it and that they build block on block on block like that. I don't think language acquisition works like that. Um, the way I think about it is you're basically throwing the language into a kind of cement mixer, if you like. You're stirring it up, you're shaking it, you're keeping it moving, you're coming back to it, and it gets stickier in different places, in different ways for different people. I think on top of that, you do obviously need to recycle and revise language. And you just need to be realistic about the fact that some students will remember some things, some students will remember other things, some students will remember a hell of a lot, and some students won't remember that much. That's just the way it is. But nothing comes from nothing. And I think if you, if you give students more meat to work with, they're more likely to feel more appreciative of what they're getting. And over time, because it's a process, you're more likely to see the results as things start to settle and get stickier.